Word. Let me know when I can start. Okay, hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here and for your interest in uh, connecting with and supporting your library communities through uh, summer meal programming. Uh, for today's workshop, please do plan to use the chat box for questions. And if possible, if you could indicate to whom your question is directed, that would be helpful. We'll go through and take questions at the end of the presentation. Um, but go ahead as, as questions come up, you can add those to the chat box. Uh, closed captioning is available today. Um, I would like to just take a moment to acknowledge that Summer at Your Library program is a project of the California Library Association supported by IMLS under the provisions of LSTA administered in California by the state librarian. Um, and following today's workshop, we will be sending out a link to the workshop recording and a list of all the resources that were mentioned in today's session. Um, we have so much uh, information we'd like to share with you today, and there's just no way for us to cover everything about California Library Summer Meal Programs in an hour and a half. So today's workshop is really geared towards um, sort of three, uh, big ideas, one, illustrating the value of starting a library summer meal program and really providing you with enough inspiration uh, to get you to start one this summer, either in the form of a library meal site or taking uh, pop-up library programming out to community meal sites. We also really want to showcase some um, really wonderful approaches to library summer meal programs from our panelists that really can provide inspiration for how to enrich and enhance your existing summer meal programs uh, or to inspire how you might approach a new summer meal program if you're just starting out. And uh, thirdly, we really want to make sure you're aware of the summer at your library and lunch at the library resources available to you for your meal programming and make sure you know that project staff are um, available and waiting to answer your summer meal questions and to help connect you with meal providers and um, other resources. So uh, Holly, could you go to the next slide, please? So on the presentation side of things, um, uh, today's workshop is a project of the Summer at Your Library program team. Uh, my name's Trish Garone. Uh, I also work with Carrie Johnson and Holly McCris. Holly and Carrie, if you just want to give a wave, thank you. <laughs> we'll be uh, hearing from Carrie in just a little bit. Carrie's going to speak briefly about the need for summer nutrition and working with partners. I'll share a bit about what library summer meal programming's looked like over the past couple of years and why this programming has been so beneficial to both libraries and their uh, communities. And then we're going to hear from eight amazing presenters uh, sharing about how their libraries use their meal programming to connect with their communities during summer 2021. We're going to hear from Yvette Herrera from Lodi Public Library, Dawn Vest from Monterey County Free Libraries, Christy Hamm from Sacramento Public Library, Rachel Acaza from Sonoma County Library, Liza Purdy and David Janning from Santa Clarita Public Library. And then we'll hear a bit about summer meal program funding available to you from Sana so Shauna Sojoiner and Lisa Lindsay at the California State Library and then we'll take questions. So again, as questions come up, feel free to add them in the chat, but we, we won't be actually addressing questions um, until uh, the end of the presentations. Um, Holly, could you advance to the next slide, please? And we are, we're gonna start off today just showing a five minute video that really gives a nice overview of Lunch at the Library programming. It was filmed prior to COVID, um, the COVID pandemic, but it really, the overall story that it tells really hasn't changed. Uh, so Holly, could you start the video, please?
Well, hunger doesn't go on vacation just because school lets up. We're the most awesome state and the richest country in the world, and like a quarter of our kids are either in poverty or at the edge of poverty. Like, you can't learn if you're hungry, right? I mean, it's, it's that basic. So if all of the kids, right, who are getting fed, if all of them were getting fed in the summer, whether that's by a library or a community center or a church or whoever it happens to be, right, that, that would be the ideal. Public libraries are natural spaces for providing children and teens with meals during the summer. They're trusted spaces at the heart of the community. They're popular with families. And also library staff are able to provide programming and resources along with the meal service. And so more and more public libraries are now starting to serve meals and more and more families are going to the library for those meals. Library staff are also collaborating with other summer meal sites in the community. They're taking programming and books and creating pop-up libraries that can attract families to other sites and increase summer learning and enrichment opportunities throughout the community. We'll see all types of families, um, young children, teens, and their parents or their grandparents or their caregivers coming in, and not only the youth connecting, but those parents and caregivers connecting as well. So it, there's just so many benefits to that. And then while they're here in the library for the meal program, they're getting connected to everything else we have in the library that they never knew, of course. Oh, the library does that? Yeah, we do, right? It's really about providing a service that they need and then showing them everything else that they can get for free. Um, and we see that time after time again because they come in for meals and then they'll walk around the corner and sign up for summer reading and then they realize that we have story times for their baby and then they start coming to baby story times um, and then they'll look even larger and branch out and realize that they have something for their older teenager, something for their, that teen to actually do to keep them busy during the summer. So it's really just opening them up to what a library can offer for their entire family. There's a lot of families that do not have the income to feed their children those three meals a day. So coming to the library and just having that one meal is just, it's a huge help. I normally rely on school lunch and school breakfast, but during their summer school program, they only offer free breakfast, not free lunch. So we find it very beneficial that I'll pick them up and then we'll come straight away here. And um, it, is, it is a huge blessing, huge blessing. By feeding the kids, we're also allowing the parents to eat the food that they have at home. Um, these, these families are hungry. There's food insecurities in our communities. And if we can feed their kids through a federal program, that means that those parents can go home and eat the food that they have in their fridges now. In California, 1.7 million children who eat free or reduced price lunches during the school year do not access summer meals during the summer. And so it's so important that we expand all sorts of meal sites, whether they're in libraries or elsewhere. And so our goal is to continue encouraging more libraries to become summer meal sites to make more meals accessible to children and provide nutritious meals for the children and teens who need them. We know that libraries are offering a wide variety of learning and enrichment programs over the summer and children will be able to learn so much more from those programs and get so much more from those programs if they're not hungry when they're participating in them. We're meeting the entire needs of every person in that family and when you talk about summer meals what you're ultimately doing is feeding people. Bottom line is that these people are eating. That's, that's a hierarchical thing. You know, you can't succeed in other places of life if you are not fed, if you do not have a warm place to be, if you do not have clothes on your back. So for a public library to meet that basic necessity so that we can ensure that other things come to this family and that they have success in other ways, um, that is summer reading. I'm struck more and more uh, in this job uh, by the passion that librarians bring to their work. When I see this program working, and, and I'm of an age, right, where the library's like, I'm sorry, there's noise. Like, there, like in my library as a kid, there was no noise. Somebody would Shh, don't stop, right? The food? Like you couldn't bring food in there. And here are these things, where are these families and these kids and they're, right? <laughs> there's noise, there's mess, there's all this stuff. And to a person, right, the librarians are like into it and see the value of it, not just for the people who are being served, but for the library, right, and for kind of the community at large. And it's killer.
That's just unbelievably awesome. Great, thank you, Holly, for playing that. Uh, if you could advance to the next slide, great. Um, I did notice in the chat, just to again, remind everyone, we will be sending a recording of the uh, today's workshop out to everybody that registered uh, along with a list of all the resources mentioned in the recording. Um, so before handing things over to Carrie, uh, who's gonna talk about, um, the need for summer meal programs and partnerships. I did just wanna take a moment to look at summer 2021 and the Lunch at the Library program growth. You can sort of look at the infographic on the left and really look at the amazing work that libraries did. You know, so many libraries were either closed or just, you know, offering curb service, um, but libraries did amazing work. Uh, Holly, if you could go to the next slide, please. And, and just to show, you know, you can see uh, the number of library jurisdictions since 2013 has grown, the number of meals served has grown, the number of libraries going out to pop up uh, to community meal sites and providing pop up programming grew, you know, exponentially with the arrival of COVID. So libraries really saw a need and met it under uh, extremely challenging circumstances. And what's kind of amazing, if you look at the participating library sites that, re that um, refers to library meal sites, you can see during COVID, there was a, a really huge drop in the number of libraries that were able to serve summer meals. But if you look at the volume of meals served at those sites, it's pretty phenomenal to see what those library sites were doing. And it really tells the story of um, the need that's out there for more library meal sites. Uh, so um, yeah, so we're really anticipating uh, more program growth for 2022. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna hand things over to Carrie. And next slide, Holly. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and welcome. Um, we saw some great stats, and we just saw a wonderful video that highlights the importance of the Summer Meals Program. And I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you a little bit more about the program, partnerships, and how to get started with your very own program. So during the summer, um, as we saw in this video, many children and teens are at home and have a lack of quality and healthy food resources. This is one of the reasons why the library plays that important role in nutrition and access to food. The library is the ideal partnership and place to meet community needs and provide those engagement activities while providing free, healthy, and nutritious meals. We have seen the need to expand the program, and it has expanded throughout the years, and we're working on expanding it more. And that need is even more important as we move into post-pandemic, as the lack of healthy food resources in our communities has highlighted the need for those quality nutrition services. The Summer Meals Program is a federally funded program and services are typically only offered in the summer. Due to the pandemic, we've had a lot of flexibility with the current program and waivers have helped libraries expand and extend services beyond summer and even during the summertime, reaching greater into the community. If interested in starting a program, the first step is to determine if you're eligible to be a site. And once you determine that, the second step is to partner with a meals provider. This is an important piece because those partnerships could take a while to form and it's best to get that conversation started early on and connect with that meal provider early to um, start that conversation. And this is something that we could certainly help with too. And our team is happy to help find a meal provider for you. Next slide. So a little bit about the need in California and um, overall the need. In our communities, many children rely on school lunches to provide nutritious food 
to help them grow healthy mentally and physically. When school is out for summer, the source of food often disappears and parents and youth have lack of access to food and free engagement activities. This is where the library comes into play. It's a way for children, teens, and families to acquire nutrition and those educational resources. So it's really connecting those two. Also um, on this slide, I've highlighted some stats and provided several links to help find resources in your community. Next slide. Many families struggle to get through the summer months and the library is a bridge for those services. The library helps promote nutrition, obesity prevention, and also helps prevent learning loss by providing those resources and engagement activities. Also, food insecurity could have serious impacts on individuals' well-being, which may result in poor school attendance and performance and physical and mental health problems. Individuals struggling with food insecurity may also have a tough decision that no one should face. No family should have to decide between buying groceries or paying rent, and no parent should have to skip a meal in order for their children to eat. During these tough times, libraries can be there to support families with food access, healthy meals, and literacy resources that also support learning. Next slide, please. So here are some more links and resources. Listed here are some lunch at the library resources. These resources can assist you with getting started, finding more information about getting started, learning about who is serving meals within your community and resources for professional development. These are all live links that you'll be able to have access to once we share the slides out. Next slide. Another significant part of the summer meals program is partnerships and those program partnerships and forming those partnerships. Summer meal programs at public library presents opportunities to build partnerships with meal providers, collaboration with city, county, school, community-based organizations, and also local businesses. Through this work, other agencies will gain more knowledge and information of the services the library has to offer. To help provide overall health, mentally and physically, Libraries are establishing partnerships to strengthen and grow our programs. Partners can help libraries introduce families to community resources, present programming, provide food for parents and caregivers, connect library staff with volunteers, provide funding, and more. There's so many ways you could work with these partners. Next slide, please. Lunch at the library can also connect public libraries with school districts and local community-based organizations. It strengthens collaboration within cities, counties, special districts, building stronger communities and providing support for families. It also provides a great opportunity to engage with community leaders and highlights the library role as our community hub within your community. So many great examples to list, but to give you an idea on this slide, here are some examples of library partnerships that give opportunities to reach different organizations in your communities. Also would like to mention that the public health department can be a fabulous partner and I highly recommend reaching out to them because they could provide material and also um, programs within your own library. Again, thank you for being here today and I'm now gonna turn it back over to Trish. Oh, next slide, please, Holly. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to go through these slides quickly just because I really want to get to the heart of the presentation, which is hearing from libraries that are providing meals and programming and they're on the ground doing amazing things. So um, why library based meal programs? They really are a win win both for community and libraries. Uh, they're a great place to connect families to free summer reading and exploration programs and other library services, um, both in person at the library, grab and go through virtual programming. Library staff get to see uh, new faces. They report that their lunch programs um, either at the library or pop-up library meal sites, connect them with families they would never have otherwise seen. And these families are often from underserved communities that the library has really had a challenging time reaching in the past. Uh, and summer meal 
programs are full of youth development opportunities. Christy Ham's going to talk about that a little bit later, how Sacramento Public Libraries really put youth development uh, as part of the core of their summer reading and summer meal programming. Um, and it's also really, as Carrie mentioned, proven to be a wonderful opportunity for forging new partnerships. Um, next slide, please. And just your library is just right. I mean, meal, meal sites come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, one room libraries, libraries are using patio spaces, adjacent park spaces, setting rooms up with, you know, as picnic areas indoors or out. Um, so it might take a little bit of creative thinking and adaptation, uh, but if there really is a will and desire, we, we can all figure out a way. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, and then just a bit about enrichment programming. Um, libraries have done an, you know, with COVID, mainly in the form of grab and go programming, but we also have seen many libraries and we'll hear Dawn from Monterey County Library talk about this and uh, Santa Clarita Library will discuss in-person programming that they've been able to do. Uh, but libraries have provided STEM programming um, kits and in-person opportunities, art programming, grab and go kits and in-person opportunities have put a lot of energy into book giveaways. Um, so that's, that's been a big focus the last couple of years in terms of integrating summer meal programming and enrichment. Next, please. Um, another area that libraries have focused on is not only increasing access to healthy food through their meals programs, but really promoting nutrition, food literacy, physical activity, and gardening activities. Uh, in conjunction with their meal programs and really working with local health departments um, as partners. Next slide. Uh, a couple of uh, really wonderful resources if you're looking to really focus on nutrition education um, is the Center for Eco Literacy. They've got uh, sort of just a slew of wonderful printable um, activities that could be added to grab and go kits or be incorporated to, into on-site programming. Next slide, please. Um, also the California Department of Public Health and the USDA have a lot of downloadable resources. Uh, to the left, um, San Bernardino Health Department um, offered I'm trying, I'm drawing a blank on what library they did this, uh, sort of a spa water, um, rethink your drink uh, programming. Uh, so that's what those photos are featuring on the left. Next slide, please. Um, and then we want you to just know about the Lunch at the Library website, which has all of the resources that we've mentioned thus far. Um, it also has information on how to get started finding a summer meal sponsor. Uh, we've got templates for promoting your meal program, information on joining the Lunch at the Library listserv and the Lunch at the Library Instagram programming ideas. So we really invite you to explore that website um, for resources. Next slide, please. And now the part of the presentation, our library summer meal programming showcase panel. Uh, and we're gonna start things off with hearing from Yvette Herrera from Lodi Public Library, who last summer served, um, coordinated and served summer meals at Lodi Public Library for the first time. So she's gonna share with us a little bit about what that first year experience was like. So take it away, Yvette. Happy to, thank you very much. So as was just mentioned, we had found out within a two day window that we were going to be eligible to serve lunches. So Carrie was absolutely instrumental in providing us as a contact with our local school district, which is Lota Unified. And we were like little mad hatters running around here trying to get things coordinated. We were still closed to the public. So we offered no in-person services besides curbside. 
and we were able to offer a 45 minute window between curbside service ending because of our staffing was so low, we had to pull staff that we did have available off of curbside and it was a kind of a balancing act. Uh, it went well. We were very surprised at the need in our community of how many children really would come in for food. We were shocked as a matter of fact. And there was four of us who we had an assembly line in our community room. We had one greeter at the front door in case people were coming in for library services. We kind of had to redirect them that curbside's available, but we're here to provide lunches for families if, we're, if they had interest. And we had our community room set up with six tables, but it was a grab and go model is kind of what we chose to go with, but they had the option to stay. And we had maybe in total, which our program was offered between July, June 14th through July 16th, we had maybe 14 to 15 people actually stay and enjoy their lunch. Everyone chose to grab and go, which was fantastic because we knew they were coming through the door and we got to see some familiar faces very quickly. Uh, I would say overall, well in total, believe it or not, we actually served 1,344 meals to families. And some of the most positive feedback I heard were, Families were afraid to bring all of their children in or to bring their whole family in because of the COVID situation. So they felt very comfortable being able to come in and grab their lunch and go. So I'm very happy to hear that this upcoming season, the waiver will also be in place to have that as an option as well. That was very useful for us, especially considering we were very low staffed. Uh, we, we did take and make kits. We had origami prepared, jump ropes, a lot of literacy materials to hand out. Uh, the biggest challenge I would say for us was the fact that we had like a two-day turnaround and what we were able to pull it together. Uh, a huge positive that maybe some of you are unaware, the uh, Lunch at the Library program purchased a refrigerator for us to be able to house our milk from or chilled items from one day to the next if we had excess. We didn't have the ability to house those items. And so they were able to purchase a refrigerator for us. And that, was been, that has been very helpful and I'm sure it will be put to good use for the Lunch at the Library program this upcoming year as well. That's kind of in a nutshell what I have. Uh, I would say overall being a first year a participant, it was well worth it when you see what your community need is. I think if you were anything like we were um, sadly surprised at the interest that the community had and the fact that they felt welcome coming in to be able to get that meal. And on some occasions when we had extra, we would give anything extra to the families and they were very appreciative because some like, like mentioned in some of the videos earlier, uh, that was sometimes their only meal. So the fact that they've got some extra string cheese. Um, another thing I wanna to mention too with our local school district, we did have a few people who were lactose intolerant. So they were able to provide lactose free milk as well as uh, vegetarian meals. So something to keep in mind, if you have anyone who's got some special dietary needs, if you can share with whoever your community partner is, they may be able to help accommodate those needs as well. That's what I have here for me. I'm happy to turn the floor over now to Dawn Vest from Monterey, Monterey County Free Libraries. Dawn, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Dawn Vest. I'm the Branch Manager at Greenfield Library, Monterey County Free Libraries. And before I get started into Monterey County Free Libraries, I just wanted to take a moment to say I've had the privilege of doing this program for five years now, and it truly is a privilege. <clears throat> um, so if anybody's sitting on the fence or wondering, oh, can we do it because of short staffing, I'd be happy to help. My contact information is at the end of this slide. <clears throat> Call me. I can help in any way whatsoever because it's we're just touching the ice, the tip of the iceberg of what can be done with this program. And we've seen the benefits. And in the five years that I've been doing it, and the only negative comment I've ever heard is that the program is ending for the summer. So that's, you know, it's just a lot of gratitude, a lot of uh, building partnerships and, and fulfilling a need. So, uh, Monterey County Free Libraries operates uh, 17 branches. <clears throat> 17 branch libraries, two bookmobiles, and a library by mail program. We also do a lot of other special programmings. Uh, one is the MORE grant, which is materials, uh, options, resources for everybody, Braille talking books, um, playaways, and screen magnifier. For our 2021 uh, lunch at the library participating branches, we have 15 meal sites and 12 pop-ups. 
we're very, very fortunate to have an administration that fully supports this program. A director who brags about the success of the program and statistics are our supervisors, an assistant director that picks up meals and delivers them, a senior manager who helped out at the branch. <clears throat> we have a team of three on our lunch and library team, <clears throat> which the assistant director is on as well, and our amazing sponsors, partners, and AO support staff that delivers the ready, ready assembled bags to the branches and all of the branches who help out. Don, Don oh, okay. sorry, Don. This is Trish. I just a couple of people are having a uh, mentioning they're having a hard time hearing. I'm just wondering if you could move a little closer to the mic. I will. I'm moving closer now. Oh, I hopefully that that's helps. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Next slide, please. So our 2021 20, uh, lunch at the library statistics, a combined total of our meal distribution on our pop-up, we had 13,702 meals served, activity bags distributed was over 12, 10,000, and our books given away was <clears throat> close to 2,000. Next slide, please. So our Lunch at the Library program, <clears throat> because of COVID restrictions, we did a jurisdiction-wide grab-and-go um, seven-week program. And here on this slide is the programs listed out. The Lunch at the Library team actually assembled the make and take bags and we worked with uh, sponsorships. And one of the things that was really cool is we did have some challenges with uh, schools being able to sponsor some uh, our libraries and other sponsors just jumped right in and said, hey, we'll take it on. And again, that's the beauty of this program. It's not a competition, it's to fulfill a need. And, of those partnerships along the way and it's really great. Uh, next slide please. So I'm going to take you through each of the weeks and I think pictures speak way better than I can and you can kind of see uh, what's going on. So our first week we did a no sew craft companion animal made out of um, socks. <clears throat> There's our kit and we actually had um, participants who <clears throat> took the uh, kit and went to the adjacent park in the library and sat down and started enjoying the activities as well as their lunch. So that was really neat to see. Uh, uh, week two was our art wiki sticks retro bubble um, activity. Uh, uh, and that was basically using wiki sticks to uh, draw out your name and paint over it. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Uh, our th uh, third week was different ways of communication, American Sign Language and Braille. And we did, um, we used our makerspace equipment and we did 3D printed hearts with I love you in Braille and be kind spelled out in sign language stickers. And we also did Braille activities and uh, ASL color by design. And you can see one of our happy patrons giving us the I love you sign in sign language. Next slide, please. Uh, sensory play, we handed out and distributed a uh, sensory box that had kinetic sand, Play-Doh, molds, and, and different sensory items for them to play with. And our next week was food, nutrition, gardening. We um, put in a reusable lunch box, the materials to be able to plant uh, strawberries and sunflowers. And we also did a paper taco, um, speaking about nutrition. We received one of the many uh, um, letters from patrons saying that they really enjoyed that craft and summer reading. Next slide, please. We did a makerspace art bot, which is basically made from a, a cool noodle, yarn, googly eyes, and markers, and a electronic toothbrush. And it would um, draw designs on the paper for you. And again, we had kids uh, go to the park and just start making their activities. Our last activity was a physical activity, and we included in a drawstring bag a frisbee jump rope tennis ball, and um, we also included sidewalk chalk and stencils. Next slide, please. So for pop-up programming, we had a lot of our libraries participate in that. I'm just really showing the pictures because I think they show um, the happy faces and also the, just the different activities. We did a uh, rose paper flower, a spiral snake, um, an airplane uh, kit, and we gave out a lot of books. And we also did a gratitude jar at our Soledad branch. Next slide, please. We gave out books at schools. We, um, our Castro Ranch uh, partnered with Recreation Center and did a tie-dye uh, shirt. And we also did a one-minute gratitude journal, again, for the high school students at our Soledad branch. Next slide, please. Uh, we gave out school supplies and a backpack filled with school supplies, a tote bag with uh, stencils and fabric paint to do yourself, to do your, um, make your 
own tote. <laughs> we did 3D uh, paint, 3D paper uh, structures of animals and flowers, um, a washcloth bunny, <laughs> a catapult, um, learned to draw and coloring figurines. We gave out paint, paint sets and also gratitude um, journaling. Next slide, please. And during the summer, we also introduced Monty Mobile, just to give a little history. Monty is our mascot, and uh, Anne had in our very first librarian used to deliver books on Donkey, so that's how he became our mascot. And this is basically a remote controlled cooler that we drove around using the remote so we could deliver water to um, individuals waiting in line to get their meals. And it also came in handy uh, for curbside service to be able to deliver books uh, uh, without uh, uh, no touch safely during COVID. So, slide please. And the last slide basically, it's just like the first page of sheets for we created this little start guide for anybody that might have any questions, suggested timelines for getting uh, started on lunch at the library and programming and a recipe for success. If you would like the full pamphlets, please email me and I can send those to you. And our um, amazing director also signed certificates and hand delivered them to all of our branches for participating in the lunch at the library program and put how many meals they serve to their communities. So I also have that link if you want. We have a lot of our make and take kits. We translated in them into English and Spanish and those links are available. Um, if you contact me that way you don't have to recreate the wheel. And again, I'd have, be happy to help in any way. That's it. I'd like to introduce Christy Ham. Youth Services Manager at the Sacramento Public Library. All right. Thank you, Don. What a bunch of great ideas. Um, I want to share the success that Sacramento Public Library has had. We've been doing lunch for a while and having youth uh, program coordinators and volunteers and uh, interns have really made the program what it is today. So we started in 2013 with one library and we served 2,300 meals that summer. Um, like everyone else has said, I think once you see the need in the community, it really does cement the reasons why this program is so vital. And once you start, you cannot um, step back from, from making this effort. I think that it really puts into play the impact that the library can have in the community. So we started with the bang and then went up to the in 2019, the last kind of normal year, we had 13 different branches and we served 21,000 meals. So it did kind of increase exponentially. And the more that it grows, uh, the more popular it is at every location because it becomes the thing that we do. Uh, so that even last summer, we weren't able to participate fully because uh, we had a grab and go model. Our libraries were open, but we were so short on staff. Uh, we served twice a week and uh, picked up multiple meals at a time. But despite that, the impact, as you see, we served 31,000 meals last summer. Um, okay, next slide, please. So one of the things I'm gonna talk about is how do you take care of the volunteers? There's such an asset to be able to make the program possible. And there's some things that you can do to make it more effective. Next slide. Okay, so the team, either volunteers or workers that you have coming in that can really help make this program possible, come into the library for a lot of different reasons. And so if you think through some of those things, it can help you better meet their needs. Next slide. Um, we're doing a lot of work here in Sacramento about making sure we're meeting the developmental and social and emotional needs for youth. And so these are some of the skills that they, um, can develop and that the Lunch at Your Library program can really help develop all of these things. It gives them a chance to develop these skills and exhibit all of these things and come away with some life lessons that can really be helpful. Next slide. So some of the ways that you can support this development is think through what the experience is like for the youth that are participating. So making sure that they have you know, consistent instruction and good communication, connecting opportunities, um, check-ins, we don't, don't assume that they know everything about the program or about your library, but it is a chance for them to learn about that and about each other and about themselves and the skills that they have. Next slide. Um, obviously getting them there is the first part and lunch is always a tricky thing because we get the grant opportunities coming right now. So we're trying to plan for the summer. Uh, getting youth to commit for things in the summer is also kind of tricky. So having the funding for stipends to be able to offer youth that opportunity to be paid for their time and their work can really help um, build in that stick-to-itiveness and it helps them 
experience it in a different way, take on some different responsibilities. But here are just some ways to connect. Uh, next slide. Uh, more things to be thinking about the experiences that you're offering is thinking about the people who are going to be working. Teen brains work differently. Different kids come in with different skills and talents. Um, and there are lots of different ways to interact in lunch at the library program. So there are some things you can do. If somebody uh, who wants to be an intern and is able to de demonstrate that responsibility, they are going to come every day and have a very uh, specific set of expectations where you may have some other opportunities that are drop in. You can come in and you know, empty the trash every day and that's not a problem. So there are different tasks for different levels of, of students and trying to make sure there's a way for everybody to participate. Next slide. Um, and then, of course, we want people to come to see what the program is like, to be able to make a difference, and to come back. And so important for that is building relationships with your teens. And so some different ways to check in with them to make sure they're getting connected to the program. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little more about that. Next slide, please. So high expectations is something that we want to make sure teens want meaning from their experiences. And they have you know, limited ways to spend their time. And so we can make connections to something that's meaningful for their community that they, that's gonna help in turn reinforce the experience. Next slide. Teens want, want real life work and life experiences. They want to be able to make a real difference and they are our colleagues and partners. They're not the future, they're the present. And so we can help support them by making sure that we give them all the tools to be successful. Next slide. Treating this like a real uh, expectation. When we have teen program coordinators that get a stipend, for example, we have some specific expectations around attendance that you have to attend, you know, six out of the eight weeks. You know, you get a week to go to grandma's, but other than that, we expect you here for these times. And if you have, you know, two no shows, you're going to be dismissed from the program and not eligible for your stipend. I think there's some things about building in those expectations that helps actually in turn help them see it as valuable and something to participate in. So in our organization, we do have them sign a volunteer handbook, make sure they're subject to all of our anti-discrimination harassment policies and safety protocols, especially right now. Um, so all of these are part of taking the experience seriously because the program itself is serious. Next slide. Okay, um, again, teens have very busy lives, wanting to make sure that we are respectful of their time and what they will experience as part of it can in turn make your program stronger. Next slide. Okay, so here's some, some things to keep in mind because what you wanna do is have places for teens to jump in and be able to be part of it, but then learn more and more and more and be able to participate in a more meaningful way. So the bottom level, obviously logistics, making sure that all of the requirements for the program itself are clear and understandable, the time commitment and how, how they can communicate with everybody. Next slide. Then you wanna make sure you're building that relationship, talking to everybody, finding out there are ways for them to do uh, tasks that meet their interests. For example, I think on my first slide, I showed one uh, teen that was really shy, which they made a sign that said lunch at the library and they walked through the library at lunchtime with that in front of their face. They didn't have to talk to anybody, they didn't have to do anything crazy. They made a sign with their artistic skills and then they used that to help market the program. So work with everybody's strengths. We definitely have people that want to circulate, that want to you know, accomplish babysitters and want to interact and do programming. You may have people that just want to take out the trash or click the clicker or hand out milk. And all of those things are tasks that are needed. And so when you work with your youth and give them something that suits their needs, they're going to in turn feel more invested. Next slide. Okay, making sure that there are options. There are lots of different things that people can do. Uh, obviously, this is voluntary. We're not gonna force anybody to be here, but there are some expectations about things that need to be done. And they may have ideas about how to make those things happen. So um, just making sure the communication is open with, the, with each of the team members and the library staff can make a big difference. Next slide. Okay. The one thing we definitely see is that when you give them the responsibility, you explain the options and you really dig in, they can so exceed your expectations and teens can really dig in, come up with amazing solutions. So if you give them autonomy, you explain what the goals of the program are, and then you get their ideas. We've definitely had youth that put together 
music to make the room seem more exciting, or let's do, play this kind of game, or let's do this craft. Lots of different ways for youth to participate and make the experience meaningful once they get a feel for how, uh, how things go. So if you give them the chance to solve problems or issues that come up, you may be amazed with what you find. Next slide. And again, they are partners. They are part of this program to make it really effective. Um, if you can welcome their ideas and entertain what they can create, you'll be amazed at what happens. Um, in addition, you're modeling what a library is, what how we think through program opportunities or decisions. So giving so making some of that decision making clear to them actually is helping giving them some workplace preparedness as well. Um, asking them for feedback and having them lead other people. Um, in addition, we found that lunch at the library has been a great way to grow library careers. We have several people on our staff now who started off as library volunteers for lunch at the library or program coordinators. And so it's been a really great way for them to see, oh, I had no idea the library can do this. I didn't know that I could be part of it. The library had all these things they wanna offer the community. So next slide. Um, so showing them the full picture of the impact is really important. Next slide. If you give them the chance to show the collective impact of all of their work, they might know that that one day we served 100 meals. But did you know this summer we served 31,000 meals? That's a big difference and it helps them to know, oh, I'm part of something bigger and I, I was part of that. And so we also uh, write letters of recommendation. We give kids a resume you know, with the skills that they have, they have exhibited during the summer, just so they have something to take away. They can honor their own success and their own uh, efforts and see how it was part of something bigger. So that's a little bit, I focused more on the why this time than the how. So next slide, I am glad to, to talk anytime about the what and the how we do it. So if you want more job expectations and you know how we recruit people and interview questions and all that, I'm glad to share that too. But, and now it is time for me to turn it over to Rachel Acasa from Sonoma Public Library. Hello everybody, can you hear me okay? Okay, great, thank you. Um, so my name is Rachel Ikaza and I am the Education Initiatives Librarian for Sonoma County Library. Go ahead, next slide, please. Thank you. Just to give you an idea of kind of the scope of this project here in Sonoma County, we do have 14 locations, um, over 200 employees, 66 of those people are full-time librarians, um, and we've got almost 500,000 residents in our county. So it's a big area. Something that's not on here is our square mileage um, it's a very large uh, county where there's folks all the way up in you know the northern Mendocino uh, border between Sonoma County and Mendocino County, very rural, very isolated, all the way to you know the middle of downtown Santa Rosa, which is kind of our largest area. Next slide, please. So in 2020, of course, everything changed, and we had a library um, summer that was like no other. Um, prior to that year, we had been serving meals at eight of our libraries, and we were bringing pop-up library programs to four community sites with a total of 12 service points in Sonoma County. And then last, uh, in the summer of 2020, uh, we were able to do pop-up library programming that really consisted of giving books away and summer um, reading information. We wanted to really highlight summer reading signups and giving away books. And we were able to do that at 40 locations. So we really expanded quite a bit. And we continue that in 2021. Um, we were able to go to at least the same number of places, give or take, because um, one thing that I learned in the last two years of, of this way of doing summer lunch is that the sites out in the community that are serving meals will change throughout the summer. Sometimes you'll start out with 40 locations and, you know, two or three of that list will end up with not enough volunteers to hand out the meal. So they close that site. So you have to kind of pivot quickly to redirect those resources that you would like to distribute to another site, find somewhere else that you can, that you can distribute um, materials, books, craft kits, uh, summer reading information. Um, and it could be, it, it was quite difficult at times to, to actually find a place to take um, the materials that we had because we just, the sites were closing adjusting their hours, you know, things change throughout the summer. Um, prior to 2020 summer and last summer, we didn't have a really great connection with the schools countywide. We, we had some service uh, points where 
libraries and schools had a really great long-term relationship, some where there just wasn't much of a reciprocal, you know, any kind of uh, give and take until we had really the summer like no other. And we were able to say, hey, we wanna support your students in the summertime. And this program, Summer Lunch the Library, just blew the door off the hinges as far as our ability to make new connections with school districts that have been there all along. You know, we've been serving their students in our libraries, you know, as they come in or, or don't over the many years. But suddenly we were able to, to hit so many more community service points and so many more school relationships. It was just really exciting. Go ahead, next slide, please. Um, this last summer, we were able to give away, during the summer months uh, alone, 6,000 books were distributed. I love this picture because this little girl has the most beautiful blue eyes ever. Um, and she's got her little sibling next to her. Um, we were able to do uh, book distribution through drive-through um, meal pickup sites at school, school districts. Now, one thing that you might not know is that a school, you think, oh, well, I want to run this by the principal. I want to run this idea, this partnership idea through the superintendent's office. Um, you know, you might talk to an uh, academic dean, which is sort of what they call the elementary school vice principal sometimes. But there's another person who's really on your team here that you might not know about, and that is the school meal coordinator. Now, this is a master's degree holding person who has a really very firm background in school nutrition and how to distribute things to people on a massive scale. They know how to do, you know, lineups. They know how to, they know how to do this work and in a way that I, I didn't really get understand until I encountered these professionals out in the field and was just really blown away that every school district has one of these folks on their team. And that person's a really key partner for you in going forward in any kind of uh, work together, especially when you're talking about lunch. But if you want to distribute anything to the families, that meal coordinator is going to have some really good tips for you. So take, take note of, of the school meal coordinator, the nutrition coordinator is sometimes what they're called. Uh, go ahead, next slide. There's a picture of us and we're in the same shirt that I'm wearing right now um, in front of one of our local elementary school. The lady that's standing directly next to me in the pink mask, that is that school meal coordinator person. And she runs all the meal pickups for every site in her district. I think there's six, six uh, locations in that district. And she knows all the staff, she knows the principals and all the folks involved. Um, another thing that um, when Christy was talking, it made me think, if you keep the superintendent of the school district up on what you're doing, make sure that you send them some photographs, make sure that you send them a short report about the numbers of what you did. Invite them to come, like if you've got a day where you're taking pictures, uh, you've gotten permission to take pictures, invite them to come. They want a win. They want the ability to stand next to you in your cute logo shirt, and they've got their little school logo shirt. They want social media pictures. They want stuff for the newspaper. Um, this is this is an opportunity for them to show their value to their community. Like, look, we brought in the library. We're partnering. Look at us. It's really they love that stuff. So don't neglect um, sending them a report because they love to hear it. Next slide. Um, here's one of the great staff who are there helping out, um, passing materials to the families. And this just reminds me about all the different places. We, primarily, my my story for you is about schools. But don't forget about your um, Section 8 housing communities here in Sonoma County. They're called Burbank housing communities for low income folks. Those sites have a lot of great summer programming. So definitely look into partnering with them. Who's the local housing authority? Talk to them. The Parks and Rec for sure. Great location um, point to hub out all of your different resources. And as Carrie was saying at the very beginning, the meal partner is absolutely crucial to this. And if you're lucky enough, and it doesn't always happen year upon year that there is a really on it professional at that organization that does the meal distribution. But if you do, ask them if you can bring them boxes of stuff that they can distribute to the sites and then your staff can just show up. The stuff has already been delivered because the meals were being delivered already. You don't, you don't have to say, oh, I'm going to load my Subaru and all these boxes and all these craft kits and all these books. No, put them on a pallet, take them to the food bank. The food bank distributes them and you just show up and you do your puppet show, you do your story time. It's a really great opportunity to work with your partners in a different way. So thank you so much for having uh, me here to talk. Please, please get in touch. I mean it. I really want you guys, if you have questions, you've never done this before, 
Um, if you've done this for a, a many summers and you just want to talk shop, I would love to talk more about this program. It's a really exciting opportunity to get out there and do something really different and cool, but still library. Thank you. I will pass it on now to David and Liza at Santa Clarita Libraries. The floor is yours. There we go. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Janning. I'm the library administrator for the Santa Clara Public Library, and I'm joined by my colleague, Liza Purdy. She's the senior librarian for Youth Services. And um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about integrating nutritional education and farm to table connections to your uh, summer meal program. Um, just a little quick background about Santa Clarita. Uh, we're in North LA County. We have a population of about 213,000 people. Um, we became a city library in 2018 with three branches, our Canyon Country, Valencia, and Newhall libraries. And about 28% of our uh, population is under the age of 18, so right in that bunch of the library um, demographic. Um, our community is a little higher than the average as far as income and education, but we still have some really real problems in regards to access to service for community members in need, services in other languages, and homelessness. So that these are things that um, we're trying to work on. So next slide, please. So we've been doing the lunch program for about three years now. We started in 2019 at our Canyon Country branch as the uh, launch site. Um, we did that in person at our community room. Staff were responsible for handing out the meals and doing some basic programming. It was a huge success. We loved the program. Even then, we still noticed we had a whole lot of food waste. Uh, Strangely enough, kids didn't want to eat carrots, so that we had lots and lots of bags of carrots left over, vegetables, stuff like that. So um, we had started talking about what we could do to kind of help, and Liza came up with the idea of composting and gardening. So we, um, she talked with our partner, uh, School Day Cafe, and the Lunch of the Library team, and we started to work on plans to um, initiate those in 2020. So 2020, we had, um, was obviously middle of pandemic, so it was pop-up programming. Our Newhall Library did a drive-up uh, lunch service, and our Canyon Country did a walk-up um, to the side door of the library. And we offered the meals, plus we had quick uh, little programs and grab-and-go kits that the families could pick up. Um, 2020 was a hugely successful year. Uh, we had over 21,000 meals we served um in that during that summer period um 2020 21 was also very successful we were able to refine our programming a little more which Liza will be talking about next um but it was a little slower than 2020 which was incredibly busy so um with that I'm going to turn it over to Liza to talk a little bit more about what we did okay you could go to the next slide so our, um, our programming was focused on three main areas um, starting last year in response to some of the issues that we, we saw um, in our food program and our lunch at the library program, which we love um, so much. Um, but we wanted to focus on healthy eating. Um, so that's our food to eat, food to grow. We wanted to focus on gardening and back to the earth it goes is um, a focus on composting and what to do with food waste. Next slide. So we cycled those um, each over the different weeks. Um, our main focus, I would say, was on our garden. So we actually purchased, um, with Lunch at the Library funds, and um, we were able to purchase large rolling um, garden beds. And our summer started off with kids helping us to build a garden. So they helped us get the dirt in, put the plants in. And all this was taking place while we were doing a grab and go model. So um, they would come up to the door or drive up um, at the at the side of the curb and then they could either park and get out and come help us garden or just after they had gotten their grab and go meal they could stop take a moment plant a plant into our our bed um, so it was a lot of fun we also did other gardening things like um, evaluating seeds and and um, allowing kids to take different seeds home with peat pods that sort of thing but a lot of that gardening focus was on tending our library gardens. Next slide, please. 
Compost. Okay, so you see here worms in a hand. Um, the worms are one of our favorite um, parts of this program, and we actually um, uh, put them together with a program that we had been working on prior, which is our worm bins, the vermicomposter. Kids love sticking their hands in dirt and getting um, a bunch of crawling worms all over them. You wouldn't think that they would like it, but they necessarily, but they really, really do. Um, so uh, a big highlight um, is when we can bring out our worm bin and have the kids put in some, some scraps and just get to, to hold the, the worms and learn how to handle them properly. We also did some programming last year with ladybugs, um, working on how those are really beneficial as, as pollinators and the, and the kids got a big kick out of that as well. Um, but worm bins, if you don't have one, get one there. They are a great way to do it. Uh, next slide. We also focused on healthy eating. Um, so we did little um, food samples, tastings, um, identify the herb, you know, that, that sort of thing that kids enjoyed a lot. Very, very hands-on and sensory. And one of the things we also did was using all of our great pandemic skills, we um, made a song and video, music video called the Fruit and Veg Pledge which, you know, I just encourage you check, check our, uh, our YouTube site out and, and see us in our, our glory. Um, but we had a lot of fun and we played that over and over on a loop at one of the meal distribution days and made, um, made our staff really happy with us on that one because they heard it a million times. Next slide. So composting is sort of what launched us into um, having this garden and healthy eating focus with lunch at the library. Because as David mentioned, a lot of kids don't want to eat. Um, we, we partner with the, the School Day Cafe, I think David mentioned, is the school food group. So you know what a school lunch is like. That's what it's like. It's great. But, you know, sometimes the um, veggies can lack a little bit of... Um, appeal. So uh, the way our meal program was structured when we're in person is that they are not allowed to take the food out um, of the room where they're eating. So um, kids wouldn't want to eat it. Parents wouldn't know what to do and kind of felt awkward about leaving it or really bad about throwing it away. So we are um, really in this year, we're gonna focus more on composting at each of our sites, um, getting little tumbler bins. And if at the end um, there are uh, fruits and vegetables that have not been eaten or fed to the worms, um, we can um, put have the kids put those into the tumbler, give it a spin, and, and off we go. And we should make some nice dirt by the end of the season. So we're looking forward to that. And it's also a great opportunity to partner with um, master gardeners and other environmental services from this, our city and, and other folks about composting, teaching how to do that at home. Next slide. So there you go. Our, our recipe was worms, dirt, and, uh, and a library garden. And, and it's been, it, it was a blast and we're looking for even better this year. Next slide. Awesome. So uh, some of the challenges we ran into in case you're planning to do something similar and things we're kind of working on ourselves. Um, these were some of the things we ran into. So um, this is a good problem to have, but we were also by 2021, we had a lot of uh, school sites and community centers popping up as lunch sites as well. So New Hall in particular ended up getting a huge drop in the amount of lunches received, which, you know, again, it's great that kids are getting fed, but it was also a, a big source for us to get in um, non-regular library users and be able to market to them. So less of an audience we could pull to. But um, another issue was obviously the mask policies and social distancing. Um, there was a lot of confusion in LA County with what the requirements were, it changed quite frequently and it made it really difficult for us to plan long-term for anything. So we didn't know we're making plans in April, but who knows whether we could do them in June. So that was a big issue as well. Um, food waste, again, still there was a lot of people that did not necessarily wanna eat their vegetables and stuff like that. So we had to, um, the composting got a lot of, um, got a, the worms got a lot of food. So. Um, related to that where none of us are gardeners. We have no green thumb and 
through a lot of trial and error, we did have um, a couple of times crops would die or the worms would die, which was very, very sad when the kids would come up asking to see the worms and we have to make up excuses that they're on vacation or something. So uh, we also had issues with, like a lot of you have um, reported, um, let staff having to do both handing out meals and doing programs. And it made it really difficult to kind of find enough people to be able to hand out the meals and then at the same time, try to coordinate doing programs. So um, we should hopefully, um, I'll turn it over to Liza to talk about how we've turned those into opportunities. Right, so next slide. So our opportunities for 2022, we are really excited that our the School Day Cafe this year is gonna be providing enough staff to distribute the meals. They're gonna, oh, the worms. It's a little sad with the worms, but they, <laughs> they bounce back and there's a gardening center really close by and, and we've learned a lot, so. They're, they're doing all right. Um, but this year, you can see there we were as our in our lunch lady um, gear. Um, this year, we're really excited that we just get to focus on the programming. So after folks are done eating or while they're eating, we'll be able to be putting on a, a great uh, program for them. We are so excited about the Farm to Summer uh, grant money that's going to be available this year. We're going to blow it out. Um, we're going to be working with our farm farmers market, local gardening group, dietitians from the school district and the hospital nearby, our food pantries. We've been working with them in community forums. They have fresh produce that is available to them. We're planning on having them come out and making sure folks know, um, you know, if there are food insecurity issues, that there are other places that they can turn. So, and then I'm very excited. We're going to be working with our local community college, uh, just launched a C library. So they're already signed on um, to work with us on that. Um, again, as, uh, lunch at the library is such a phenomenal way to market your library, summer reading program to people who might not be regular library users. Um, this is, this is your, your golden opportunity. So I hope if you're on the fence about doing it, go for it. Um, even starting, start small and, and grow it from there. You will love the experience. It's, it's really rewarding. And with that, I'm gonna pass you on to Shauna Sojoyner. Thank you, Liza and David, really appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shauna Sejoyner. I'm a library programs consultant with the California State Library. And I'm joined by my colleague, Lisa Lindsay, grants analyst. And we are here to let you know about the Lunch at the Library funding opportunities available through the California State Library. Uh, we've heard a lot of great summer meals programming ideas from the amazing panel of previous speakers, and we're here to let you know how to apply for funds to support and offer some similar programs in your library communities. Next slide. The California State Library is excited to provide the state funded program open to all California public libraries supporting summer meals for children and teens. This is the first year that lunch at the library funds will be distributed directly from the state library and grant funds will be distributed among participating libraries to maximize the benefit to as many library communities as possible statewide. Next slide. Funding opportunities. So there are four different funding options available. Pop-up libraries at community meal sites, library-based meal sites, youth development, and farm to summer. Please note that funding amounts will be dependent on the overall number of applicants. So while we may have general funding amounts listed for each of the options, we are unable to confirm the exact funding amounts until all, requ all requests have been received. Next slide. So I'll now go through each of the four different funding options that are available. So first we have pop-up library programming funds to support jurisdictions taking pop-up library programming out to community meal sites. And funding amount is up to $1,000 per site with suggested um, number of visits of three to four pop-up library visits per site. Next slide. Next we have library-based meal sites funds to support jurisdictions serving summer meals at their library sites and funding amounts are up to $2,500 per library meal site. 
and jurisdictions who will be serving summer meals for the first time will receive an additional $1,000 for startup costs. Next slide. We also have youth development funds to provide teens with workforce readiness skills while assisting with the lunch at the library program. So funding amounts for this opportunity will be determined based on the requests received. Libraries planning to incorporate youth development programs into their lunch at the library plans will be asked to provide a funding request amount, a description of your youth development program, and how you plan to spend the youth development program funds. Next slide. We also have Farm to Summer funds to support efforts to provide kids and teens access to fresh, locally sourced, nutritious meals and experiential learning activities related to local produce. And the funding amounts for this opportunity is up to $500 per site. And please know that libraries can apply for any or all of the four different funding options I've just listed, depending on your summer meal plans. Uh, next, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Lisa. Great, thank you, Shauna. And I just, I'm gonna really quickly make sure you guys know that the application this year is super easy to fill out. You'll find it on the link that I just shared in the chat box, and then I'll share the link that goes directly to the application next. But basically, you'll um, follow that link, create a profile for your jurisdiction if you don't already have one for your jurisdiction and then go right into the application. And you can, of course, just fill out the parts that are relevant if you're not doing um, farm to summer, just skip that part. And the sooner you fill it out, the more time you have to email us questions if you get stuck. But again, we've tried to make it as simple as possible. And um, next slide. Just a couple of reminders. Um, the application is open right now, and we posted the um, FAQ from the office hours that happened last week. Um, there's just a write up if anyone wants to read through that and see if any of their questions are answered there. The deadline to apply for funding is March 10th at five o'clock. And then you'll um, find out about how much you'll be awarded about a month later. And then the deadline to expend all funds will be September 30th. And I'll turn it back over to Shauna. Thanks, Lisa. Next slide, please. Uh, so a friendly reminder again that the deadline to apply for lunch at the library grant funds is Thursday, uh, not November, uh, excuse me, Thursday, March 10th, <laughs> uh, 2022. Um, if you have any general questions about this funding opportunity, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can see our email address on the web on this slide, lunch at library.ca.gov. Um, and for more information about the Lunch at the Library grant opportunities, including lists of what funds can be used for, an FAQ document of questions received during the funding opportunity office hour, as Lisa has already mentioned, and a link to apply, please visit the Lunch at the Library grant opportunities webpage on the California Library website and also on this link that you see on this slide. And with that, I will turn it over to the Summer at Your Library team. Thank you. Wow, uh, just a huge thank you to our presenters and their great ideas and, ex and sharing their expertise and their commitment to providing nutrition resources in their communities. A huge thank you to Shauna and Lisa for working so hard again to getting out state these the state funding opportunities out to California libraries. Thank you so much for presenting today. Um, at this point, if you have any questions, if you could put those in the chat, uh, that would be great. I also do want to reiterate that we will be sending a copy of the recording um, the slide deck and the resources that were mentioned uh, in the workshop today out to everybody that registered. Um, and yes, again, so if you have any questions, if you could also indicate who those questions might be for, if you put them in the chat, that would be helpful. Um, and let's see if we... We'll, I'm going to just start to go into the chat just to see if there's any questions. Um, Carrie, if you could also, I'm just, I feel like I'm not that great at processing 
chats. If you see a question, I'm just scrolling through. Um, let me see if we have any. Um, oh, okay. I see a question for Christy. Do you have any? Yeah, I saw the questions about uh, heartfelt impact of, of story. Um, I'm trying to think. We definitely have plenty of youth who have gone on to become library employees. And so including some that are career staff now because of the exposure that they got to the library. I'm trying to think of what, you know, there's been so many over the years of youth that have formed a relationship with the library. And one of the, th the funny things about this program as you're recruiting youth from the neighborhoods of the libraries that you're serving, and these are, you know, the, all these branches have to qualify, but in, in terms of being um, in an area that qualifies, the we definitely have seen that the youth that then volunteer are also getting meals in turn. You know, they might not come to the library meal program, but they're working the library meal program, and you know that that's helping extend their families' budgets as well. Great, thank you, Christy. And I see a question from Lizette uh, saying, we noticed that the waivers to do grab and go lunch ends early this summer. Does that mean we should not plan on doing grab and go lunches? Um, I think we're waiting to hear if that will be extended. So there is a, there's a good chance that grab and go may be extended into the summer, but I'm gonna let Carrie just confirm that. Yeah, there is a chance that it can be extended, but we probably wouldn't know closer until closer till the expiration date. So we may not know till like mid June when a lot of our summer programs are going to be starting and the current waiver is set to expire at the end of June. So if you could plan for both cases, I know that could be difficult, but if you could plan maybe to do grab and go at the beginning of summer and if you have plans in place where maybe you could shift how you're serving those meals, if that happens to expire, if the waivers happen to expire, that may be the best plan, but we are hoping that they are extended for the summer and we will keep everyone updated on the waivers. But it is difficult for planning. I see another question um, youth uh, regarding youth development programs. Must funds be used for stipend? Uh, we wanted to offer a healthy eating program led by youth volunteers. Can funds be used to purchase supplies for a six week program? I guess that's more for Shauna and Lisa. Thank you. Uh, so um, I just want to, well, first answer the second part of your question, Guadalupe. Yes, absolutely. Funds can be used to support the uh, healthy eating program led by youth volunteers um, for your six week program. Um, but I do want to go back just in terms of the stipends. So uh, lunch at the library grant funds cannot be used for stipends um, or honorariums or similar type of payments. However, they may be used for fellowships um, and or for scholarships for teens as part of programs that support teens development and access to developmental assets and thereby support the teens education. So examples include programs that support development of teens' social emotional skills um, and programs that support the development of teens' workforce readiness skills, all which fall within um, the type of uh, youth development programs that Lunch at the Library is promoting. So no stipends, but fellowships or scholarships will be okay. Um, okay, if you have any, if you have additional questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm not, I think we've covered them all. Oh, um, where can we access the frequently asked questions from the recent office hours related to lunch at the library? That again, I think Sean and Lisa. Sure, that is on um, our website. I will put a link to it. It's gonna be on the applications instructions page on the, lunch, the state library's lunch at the library site and I am putting that in the chat and you will be able to specifically find it underneath in the timeline of the second bullet point which lists the funding opportunity office hours there's a link that says questions and answers and that's where you'll find the Q&A. 
Great, thanks, Shauna. And yeah, uh, we encourage you to add any questions to the chat. Um, we have concluded the presentation portion of the workshop. So before people hop off, um, the Summer at Your Library team just wants to say thank you so much for attending. And we are literally sitting here waiting to answer questions, help connect you to meal providers, um, provide you with resources. So if there's anything we can do to assist you in your process of either enhancing an existing summer meal site or starting a summer meal site for the first time, figuring out how to do pop-up programming, uh, please be in touch. Uh, our contact information is on the screen right now. Uh, so again, thank you so much for attending. I also, um, no, I think I did, yes. Again, thank you so much to all our presenters and we will remain on um, the call just to make sure we've answered any questions. So let's make sure we haven't missed anything and we hope you all have a great day. Thanks again for being here. Um, frequently asked questions, I th think. Thank you, thank you. I th think so. Oh, uh, Ember asks, who should I contact about identifying a meal provider? Oh. Uh, Ember, yes, contact Summer at Your Library at cla-net.org. Um, carries the whiz at uh, summer me identifying summer meal um, program partners. Uh, but yeah, so just shoot an email uh, to the team and so one of us will respond to you and we'll get the conversation going. Um, let's see if there's anything else we've missed. Okay, I think we've addressed all the questions that are currently in the chat. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. We'll stay here 